Testing one, two, three. Okay, great. Okay, good, good morning all. Uh, this is Judge Evans. We're here this morning on the minor guardianship docket. Appreciate everybody's patience. Sorry for starting a little bit late. Um, so just a friendly reminder as we go through the proceedings here today, if you'd uh, please keep your <laughs> muted so uh, we don't hear little dogs barking in the background. Oh, <laughs> I just got in trouble with dogs barking. I didn't get in trouble. Just a, just a friendly reminder, just to make sure your phone is muted uh, while your case is not being discussed. My old neighbor. Come on, so, say out. So Heather, could you go ahead and mute your phone, please? Okay. All right. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, what I'd like to do is go ahead and just uh, call the cases. I, I, I try to uh, in the, try to go to those cases in which will be take shorter time, take those first, and those that are more involved in will take uh, additional time or, or longer periods of time to take those near the end. Uh, there's an indication on the, the Zoom chat. Uh, there is um, here for presentation setting over any argument for one week by agreement on the guardianship of Birch. So that's kind of what I'm looking at uh, for information related to cases that will take a, it's indicated it'll probably be a short period of time. So let's just go ahead and call that one now. It's the guardianship of Dalen Birch, which is cause number 23420908. Um, I, I show that Ms. Day is present as the guardian ad litem. Ms. Winkles is present as counsel for uh, the minor, I believe, Dalen. And then- That's Ms. correct, John. Great, thank you. And Mr. Esau is present representing, I read your name, but I didn't put a notation of the connection. So if you could remind me of that connection. Uh, Mr. David Birch is my client, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And is, is Mr. Birch here today on the line with us? Just want to recognize him if he is. I just spoke with him on the phone and I assumed he was, or he, he told me he was, so I'm not sure I don't see him, so... Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and let's see. One moment. Okay. Um, and so it looks like we're there was a proposed order that was submitted by Ms. Winkles on an order on emergency guardianship on that uh, and also restraining order related to that. So let me ask if Norlene Moxley is present. Norlene Moxley, are you here? If you are, please unmute, state your name. Okay, no response heard. Uh, and Kristen Kearney is present. Um, Ms. Kearney, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great, thanks. All right, so Ms. Winkles, uh, you submitted that proposed order. Um, Ms. Day, do you have any uh, objection to that? Mr. Esau, do you have any objection to that? I don't have any objection to setting it over for a week. I did want to note that I don't see any sealed documents that would have included the um, required UA testing that needed to be done. So I don't know where we're at with that, if that's going to also be set over. Okay, thank you. Mr. Esau? I don't have any objection to the entry except for one uh, typo, which I've notified Ms. Winkles about. And uh, other than that, um, we can enter that order today if the court wishes to do so. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if the set over is for other things like the drug issue, drug testing issue or what. So, um, but yeah, I have no objection to the order. So Ms. Day, was that your, your so principal Day, motivation for setting it over was the, to get information related to the SUD testing? Well, I, I agreed because there was some talk that there may be an agreement coming, but father was ordered to do a UA within five days of the last hearing, which would have been should have been received by uh, the 27th or the 28th of June. That has not been accomplished that I can see. It hasn't been provided or filed. So I just wanted to make the court aware of that. I don't object to the set over, but that has not happened. And does that uh, does that have bearing on the proposed order? It was supposed to be contingent upon visitation with the child. Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor, if I may, the proposed order um, is for has the uh, order in it for the drug testing for all the parties essentially and um my understanding is none of it's been done um 
the reason I requested a set over is purely because my client being 12 years old, it's hard to get a hold of her. She's in Vancouver. Um, and so for the next hearing, which was a review, I asked to set it over with the understanding that everybody was still going to get drug testing. I'm hoping that's injured by next week. That That's my hope. Um, however, the restraining order and the order should be entered. And that way there's no confusion that everybody needs to go get a UA done. Um, and that's what I'm requesting is that everybody go as if the oral order is valid um, and that we just enter the orders today and that they file those as they were ordered to do at the last year. And Ms. Winkles, your proposed order is talking about drug testing via UA on the following individuals, uh, Kristen Kearney, David Birch, and also the child. That's those, so, that's um, this is Kristen Kearney. I was, put, me and David were both supposed to take UAs. Either, no one has reached out to us where to go to do that. That's consistent with what my client says too, Your Honor. Yeah, nobody has reached out to us. Go to any drug testing facility. Usually, you check somewhere and you're like, go, hey, we need you to go I, here. I called places and they said that it had to be uh, this person had to call them. It was the DSHS office. And they said that even if I got a UA, that it wouldn't be valid through the court if it wasn't through you guys. Same. And Your Honor, if I can just uh, state performance, occupational health, and uh, Longview, I'm not sure if that will work. Uh, they're the cheapest in the area that I know. You can do same day walk in. Um, the UAs are inexpensive in comparison to everywhere else. What's it called? Performance, occupational health. And that's consistent with my understanding. And performance, occupational health will send the results directly to me to be filed so okay. that there's no chance of tampering. Um, with the written result. Okay. So does does that help, um, Ms. Kearney? Yeah, yeah, just because me and Mr. Birch were both uh, wondering. And yeah, we were, I'm not sure, I haven't talked to David um, like recently, but yeah, we were working towards coming to some sort of like agreement or whatever with the with the guardianship. Okay. Um, and, and Mr. Birch, does, does, that, does that help you to, to know where you can get that test done? Uh, a little bit. Is that here in Longview? It is apparently. Yes. Your Honor, I will email Mr. Birch with the information, the phone number, and the address today. Okay. Um, my uh, email has changed. I got a different email. My phone got broke over the weekend. Okay. Um, can I still the same phone number? I can give you a call when we're done here. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. That's what I'll do. And Kristen, you would need to take Daylin. Both of you go and get those tests done immediately yeah absolutely um would monday be a good day well daylin already has a ua scheduled so is she needing to do two uas because no, she's she, she's doing one at my office so that's oh, why okay. still to the office. okay 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 so look looking at the proposed order the the order um you know, the in relevant part under uh, paragraph 19, it says that the parties are to submit to a 12-panel a, a test within five days from the date of this hearing. Um, and is the hearing, if, I'm just looking to see if the order references a specific date in which the hearing was held. The hearing it was on the 8th. Right. It should be on the front page. Uh, the front page of that order has the date that the um, emergency minor guardian was appointed, and that would have been that should have been the date of the hearing itself. The June twenty second date. Okay. Well, I, as far as the setting it over, um, I'm not sure if we need to do that. Uh, in that, we, we will now have a signed order that says the parties are required to submit to a basically a twelve panel test. Uh, within five days of June twenty second, whereas before it was it was a, an oral ruling, and now it's been reduced to writing. So, so Ms. Day, I, I know that that was your request, but but as far as an signing off on that order or any concerns related to that order on emergency minor guardian, uh, do you have any objections to it other than your request for setting over? The only thing, the only request I would have. Um, is that there be a date certain that this be accomplished. It's now been almost a month. And so the um, validity of that test becomes suspect now that we are three and a half weeks late in getting that accomplished. 
the verbal order of the court was to have it done within five days so that myself and Ms. Winkles and the court could be assured that the child was in safe care and that um, appropriate steps were being taken to keep her safe and provide for support with her father's visitation. And so here we are almost a month later, nobody's taken a UA and contact is occurring. And I tried I to take a UA multiple times. Mr. Mr. Isa, any any um, any thoughts of when that can happen? Well, it sounds like um, the performance occupational health place is pretty available. It could be done on a walk-in. I think we can certainly have it done five days from today. Uh, I would think so. If we have a date, if we need a date certain, um, we could do uh, today's the twenty July twenty fifth. I think that's a Tuesday. Have it done by Tuesday, and then the reports will go directly to Miss Day. Okay, Miss Carney and Mr. Birch, uh, can you get it done within five days? Y yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, me and David, like he had said, we both tried um, because I went to the family health center and I tried to do the same thing. <laughs> and the family okay. health center told me exactly what, um, that it, there had to be something. So I'm glad that you guys had the occupational health. So yeah, it'll be done. Thanks. So, so that'll be the court's order that, that that's taken care of, uh, no later than five days. And then the restraining order that's proposed, does that, anybody have any objection to the restraining order? No, your honor. No, your honor. No, your honor. Okay. All right, I will sign off on, on both of those, uh, both those orders uh, with that kind of that notation as far as the five days of the test being accomplished. So I will sign off on I'll sign off on both. Any additional items, Ms. Winkles? No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Isai, any additional items? No, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> okay, great. Okay. Mr. Birch, uh, Ms. Kearney, any final questions? No. No, Your Honor. Okay, great. Thanks oh, for joining us today. Appreciate everybody's assistance and help. Ms. Day, any final items on your end? No, thank you, Your Honor. I'm good. Great. Thanks. All right. That'll conclude today's matter. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. What's the next court date set out for a week? Um, I don't I, I I don't think a date is set. Oh, we're just waiting on the UAs. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. Great. Thanks. All right. Thank you. All right, let's next move to the Oliver matter, uh, guardianship of Pamela, Pamela Oliver, 234172-08. Uh, there, it looks like uh, Ms. Farr is present. Uh, she's morning. the, good morning. And we have, uh, let me ask if Christine Matthews is on the line. Christine Matthews, are you here? And Gretchen Vandenberg, are you on the line? Okay, not hearing a response. And then uh, Teresa Massey, are you on the line? And Mitchell Oliver, if you're on the line, please state your name. I see Ms. Vandenberg on the Zoom, but she's muted. Oh, there she is. She sent a text uh, via Zoom where she says, my mic won't work. Um, Ms. Vandenberg, are you... Uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Zoom, and this may be repetitive or redundant, but... Uh, there should be an, an an icon on your phone or your device that you can press and it will unmute, but it sounds like you may already be aware of that. So um, another option to consider, Ms. Vandenberg. Okay. Another option to consider is simply using calling into the Zoom with a phone number. Oh, looks like you're unmuted there, and now you're connecting to audio, so we'll hold tight for a second. Okay, so now I show that you're connected and now you're muted uh, on Ms. Vandenberg's uh, box on the screen. So Ms. Vandenberg, why don't, why don't I, we give you just a, a moment to, to work on that and, and call in via the phone. So it sounds like you're pretty savvy with the thing. So we'll just wait just a second and allow you to call in and we'll see if we see a pop up.
Okay, so Ms. Vandenberg and Ms. Farr, I, I think what I'll, I'll just pivot for a second and see if uh, Ms. Vandenberg is able to call in on the line. Uh, and when I see her pop up in the participant list, we can all return to this case. Okay, thank you. Thanks. All right, next let's move to the guardianship of Jaden Vratny. Cause number is 2342108. Uh, there, uh, Ms. Farr is present as the, the guardian ad litem. Uh, and we have Michaela Kaywood. Are you on the line today, Michaela Kaywood? I'm her mother. Okay, pardon me. Tell, tell me your name. My name's Heather Kaywood. Okay, okay. And, and you're the mother of Michaela Kaywood. Yes, yeah, so and she's passed. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, and so we're here today for a motion for uh, show cause. And it looks like uh, last time we were here was on the 6th of July, uh, which extended the uh, order, of, uh, the immediate emergency matter guardianship and set it to today and related to proof of service. So in looking at the, um, the case file, I didn't see that service was effectuated on, uh, on the father. Mm -hmm. Any updates there, Ms. Farr? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. So I received the proof of service yesterday. I've talked with him several times. He is incarcerated. Um, and he uh, acknowledged that he received the documents. He's going to sign the consent um, and get that back to us this week. So we just need to set this out, uh, I think, to be safe, the 20 days for his service, okay. uh, even if we receive the consent prior to that. So if we, um, that would put us at August, August 10th, that would put us. Yes, Your Honor. Days. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Farr. M Ms. Kaywood, any, yeah. any questions or input? No. So we're just basically waiting on his response, Sherry, that you, we, mm -hmm. for him. We have to wait 20 days from the day he was served okay. to give him the proper amount of time to respond. Yes. Okay. Did he portray to you that he would go ahead and just sign, or do you think it's going to be a wait? Oh, well, I can talk to you later. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll call and talk to you about that afterwards. Okay. Um, and Your Honor, we would probably be entering final orders that day. On that date also. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, that, that seems like a reasonable approach. If the, there's service and there's an indication that there's a potential to consent or waive, uh, then we can set it to that 21st day. Um, and if we have that, all that information in place, then we could uh, probably move forward with finalization. So we'll set it over to August 10th. August 10th is a Thursday. That'll be at 1030 in the morning. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, possibly uh, finalizing the case at that time. Okay. You do Thank, you. Thank you very much. Hmm. The clerk indicated that there's also a need uh, to extend the, the immediate emergency order for an additional period of time until the, the next court date, which is that August 10th date. Um, so let me pull it up here. Yes, thank you for <laughs> remembering that. Okay, so this is on, let's see, let me just pull it up here. The fraught knee matter and... Okay, so that's the order. I'm just taking a note here so I can prepare that order. Hear me now? Sorry, I wanted to I'll be sure they know about it since 14 This is Gretchen Vandenberg. Can you hear me now? I can, Ms. Vandenberg. Uh, we're finishing up one case and we're, right. we'll re quickly return to your case here in just a moment. Thank you. Okay, so I will make sure that that extended uh, immediate re restraining order is is inputted into the system today, and then we'll see everybody on the 20th, pardon me, August 10th. See everybody then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It. Okay, so let's go back to the Vanden, uh, the Pamela Oliver matter, 2341720808. Um, so Ms. Vandenberg, it sounds like I, you can hear us now and-, and yeah. I could hear you coming through. So. Perfect. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened, but I just restarted and it worked. So thank you for your patience. Yeah, yeah that's great. Thanks for making the, the pivot. All right, so join us. We still have Ms. Farr is present. And let me get back to my notes. 
All right. And so uh, Ms. Farr was appointed as, as guardian ad litem recently, and this involves a case coming from Alaska and potential uh, successor guardians. Um, and okay, there I can see Ms. Ms. Vandenberg uh, coming through clear with your photo. Appreciate that, or your camera. So um, Ms. Farr, do, do you want to just lead out and uh, just give a kind of just status update where we're at? Yes, Your Honor. So um, initially there was a petition to change the guardianship to appoint successor guardians that was filed, but we didn't have the transfer completed yet. And so um, there was a new order put in place so that I could help them with that transfer. We have, uh, there was a provisional order already signed by Alaska. <laughs> and so I helped them get the um petition to get the, the provisional acceptance, the order from our court. So, and Ms. Uh, Vandenberg brought the, the um, motion in and filed it yesterday and tried to get an order, or maybe it was the day before, but she tried to get an order to you to sign for that provisional acceptance. And the clerk, she said the clerk would not provide it to you. So I guess we need to set this over. And she said that I guess the clerk told her that she had that the petition had to be scanned in before we could get the order, which I don't know if that's hmm. procedurally correct or not. But yeah. regardless, we didn't get the order to you. So Ms. Vandenberg has the original order to be signed. She could drop it off to you ex parte if you would um, sign it that way. Yes, thumbs up. Perfect. <laughs> so would I just Perfect. go to the courthouse and ask them to give it to you, Judge? Yeah, yeah. generally the way that works is you present yourself at the clerk's office and say, uh, please uh, provide this to Judge Evans via ex parte. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. And so then that, that proposed order that uh, Ms. Vandenberg will be dropping off today <laughs> is the provisional acceptance order. Correct. So then that goes back to Alaska for Alaska to then issue the permanent transfer. Then we have to have Washington accept the permanent transfer. Then we can go forward with the successor guardian. <laughs> Lots of so it's, it's a complicated process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ms. Farr, I appreciate your, your, your assistance and Ms. Vandenberg, thanks for your legwork and making all that happen. Do, do you have any questions, Ms. Vandenberg? What kind of the next I don't. And, and Sherry has been wonderful. I have to tell you, I mean, we, there was not a lawyer in town that would take this case. And so I was doing it on my own. So having her be assigned was a gift, quite honestly. Yeah. So I will make sure that I get the order over to the clerk's office and tell them exactly what you told me. I tried to tell them just to give, but they wouldn't give it to you because it was, they didn't have the other, they didn't have the the other in. And so without that being in, there was no reason to give you the order. Sure, yeah, appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Thanks oh, for okay. being willing to come back again today and drop that off. That's great. So um, so then with that in place, assuming that that order is signed, dropped off today and signed and that's put into place, uh, then there's some interstate uh, activity that needs to occur and then a once that's, do we just wait until that's completed before it's noted up? Or do we set a date with kind of a perspective of having that completed and maybe making an estimate when that will be? I think we should probably set another date and we'll okay. do the best we can to make sure that that date is met to get the next step finished. So I would say two weeks. Two weeks? Ms. Vanderberg, go. Uh, that would be my guess. Okay. Uh, Ms. Vanderberg, does he, the, does the you... guardian in Alaska? Sorry, Your Honor. The no, guardian please. in Alaska has been very cooperative through emails and phone calls and getting the. Um, I guess the hang up would be how long it takes her to get the court in Alaska to sign the permanent order. So, but right. I still think we should keep this on track. Okay. I believe if we give her a deadline, that would help. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Having deadlines really does help all of us. So why don't we set this over to August 3rd? Uh, that may be pushing it a little bit, but the, the push may may get it over to, uh, to the finish line. So let's do that. We'll set it for August 3rd at 1030. Uh, hopefully all that can be signed and taken care of and can be uh, wrapped up at that time. So thank you. Thank you both for your assistance and help. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. 
<laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, all right. And so, then we yes. probably need, do we, oh no, I don't, I think we do need, do we need an extension on this one? I don't, Sorry, I don't, I don't see don't, one. I don't think we have anything in place. We don't. Correct. Yeah, there's, there's, I'm not showing any. Yeah, any we, we have a power of attorney in place. Yeah. Clerk also indicated that Sorry, Your Honor. not one in place. No, no worries. Not one in place yeah. to do an extension. Right. We have, we have, she has a power of attorney uh, in place from the current Alaska guardian. That's where we're at. So okay. thank you, Your Honor. Great. Thank you. All right. So that'll conclude the hearing for today. Then we'll see uh, rejoin on August 3rd and we'll look forward to that, the docket, the uh, document that's coming in today and that'll get things moving along. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Let me double check. Ms. Fard, do you have additional cases that are on today? Just want to see. I believe I have one more. That's the Brunswick. Okay, let's go to that. Okay, um, so uh, the Brunswick matter, there's uh, two cost numbers, 23-4-136 and 23-4-255, both ending in 08. Uh, there, as far as involved, and I show that we have uh, Brunswick um, is the 255 cause, which I think is the focus of today. And then Bradley Peters is here. He, Mr. Peters has been patiently waiting uh, this oh morning. So, Mr. Peters, can you hear me okay? Okay. I saw your mouth move, and I think you said yes, Your Honor, and it was just muted at the time. So, just make sure that you can unmute because we had some issues with somebody. I'm I'm here, Your Honor. Thank you. Perfect. Great. Thank you. All right. Yeah. And it looks like, uh, is it Cateron? Is that how you pronounce your name? Cateron? Cadron. Cadron. Thank you. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Name. That's a great Thank name. You. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then Ms. Farr is present. Um, and then uh, Shira Kroll. Um, is she on the line today? I'm here. I got a background going on on my thing. It's distracting me. It's okay. Sorry. No, you're fine. Okay, and then mm -hmm. um, I'm Scott. Just gonna stop the video. Is, it, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I don't, that's fine. Okay, so with that, um, with those introductions, um, there was an order of J July nineteenth of this year that transferred the child to the care and custody of Bradley Peters, um, and noting him as the the guardian. And Ms. Farr was discharged as a court visitor and and reappointed as guardian ad litem. And uh, I think we're on today, and the parties can uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, that we're here on an order to show cause why Mr. Peters should not continue on as the guardian. I think that's why we're here. Ms. Farr? Yeah, yes, Your Honor, that's correct. And then also to dismiss the um, 136 case. Right. Okay. And the 136. Um, is there any objection to the uh, dismissing of the what we call the 136 case? That's the... Um, so, Mr. Peters, do you have any concerns related to uh, that? I'm a little confused um, about the dismissal of guardianship. Yeah, Ms. Farr, maybe you can just provide a little background on why that, why you think that's appropriate. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So, uh, initially, uh, Ms. Cutberth was appointed as the the um, immediate uh, under the immediate order as guardian. Um, she's decided that she cannot go forward. Mr. Peters has filed a petition so that he can become the guardian. Um, and service has been made on mother under Mr. Peters filing. And so now we are looking at dismissing the first case under uh, that was filed for Ms. Cutberth um, and then continuing on with the second case where we would be appointing uh, Mr. Peters. Thanks. Okay. I understand. Perfect. Good. Thank you, Ms. Farr, for that, that explanation. And also the, the clerk just handed me a note that, that uh, another judge had already dismissed that so prior to it coming today. So that, that's already taken care of. So we're, we're good there. And that may not have already oh. hit the file. I, I, okay. I'm, I thought that we were doing that today, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it looks okay. like somebody, somebody got a, a jump start on that. So that 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 the 136 is dismissed. So that, that takes care of that particular discussion. So thank you for that. Okay. And then we're on today um, for the related to whether Mr. Peter should continue on as the, the guardian. Um, so um, 
I'll hear from the parties uh, related to that. Maybe Ms. Farr, if you'd like to lead out, I'll hear from you first, and then Ms. Mr. Peters, and then from Ms. Kroll. Okay, Your Honor. So, and this is a matter where um, the child it has been living with uh, Mr. Peters for the better part of the last year, um, and mother is having some struggles. She's she has some drug addictions, homelessness. Um, and there's currently a warrant for her arrest. And so the child is in Mr. Peter's care or and um, should remain there um, while mother um, improves her situation. And, the, and so for that reason, the um, emergency guardianship should be entered and Mr. Peter's appointed as the emergency guardian. Okay. This is this child has some special needs, um, um, some mental health issues, and um, needs immediate uh, counseling and treatment. And Mr. Peters has been uh, working with Miss Cut Cutbirth. Miss Cutbirth and Mr. Peters are siblings. They've been working together to get this child the help that the child needs. Okay. Great. Uh, and then also, just so you know, too, because you're new on this one, that uh, father is deceased. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Farr. Okay, thank you. Um, let me touch base um, with Ms. Kroll. Ms. Kroll, you've heard what Ms. Farr's okay. position is. What's, what's, what are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts on it are that I haven't been keeping close contact with Sherry. I have a kind of hit, hit a depression. Like I feel like um, anything I do or say in court has been gone backwards. I don't I'm having a problem making appointments and keeping them. I'm not having a problem with a drug addiction as far as like what they're thinking. I do smoke weed and drink every once in a while. Uh, I mean, it's like, I'm not doing good with this court thing at all. Um, it's just gone on and on. Me and Brad's relationship was completely toxic. Uh, the thought of hearing him talk after I done talking, my heart's like literally racing. Uh, I've had a trauma response to all this. My son needs me. I haven't had a visit with him. We started court in uh, May, April, April 7th. I got served. I think I had a uh, court and I haven't gone very far at all with anything I need to be doing. I've had places I'm staying that didn't work out. Uh, I haven't been able to see my kids at all. There was a no contact order issued between me and Brad, which makes uh, a lot of things impossible. Um, through all this, I've lost my full-time job. I've lost, uh, pretty much everything that I was doing is just all different. Um, I don't know how to, I have a friend who's going to help me get a lawyer. Um, Brad, Bruno bring, being with Brad and Cadron, uh, I need outside help. This isn't working out <clears throat> at all. And it's just, I feel like it's just digging me a deeper hole. Um, I don't, I don't even know what to say. There's, I haven't like, I haven't even seen Joss in so long, my other daughter. Um, I don't feel like I'm not even saying the right stuff right now that I need to be saying that's most important. Um, I even went as far as to, um, I don't know. I don't, Bruno's really depressed. Every time I talk to him, he's miserable. Um, he can't talk. I have gotten maybe 10 minutes at a longest phone call. I don't ever have video chat. I never know where Bruno is between Brad and Cadron's. Cadron says that Bruno's not in a good place being with them. It's been torture, all these things that are opposite to what I'm hearing. In court, they don't say anything against each other, but outside of court, it's completely different. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of things said about me after I'm done talking for the, saying that. I feel completely isolated from everything. I've been in my kids' lives for 10 years straight. And uh, this isn't going well. I even met with Sherry personally i've talked to her on zoom once he, she's just heard what brad said 
Brad currently has the open CPS case for Sam uh, got going. The kids aren't as happy as he makes it seem. <clears throat> Both of them have gone to the hospital for um, emergency. Uh, they were saying they were suicidal. Sam ran down and had called and had committed herself to the hospital. Uh, he drinks a six pack a day of alcohol. He's alcoholic. That's worse. I mean, I have records of him, you know, us having to call the police for him harassing the family. There's, you know, court paperwork from us having our no contact order before and declarations where, you know, everything's completely. I have like nine declarations from people stating character. I've never had the cops called on me in our home. I don't even know where to start with all this. It, and the court's just going worse and worse. You know, I even went as far as to tell the other judge he had a smirk on his face. Like, I don't, not doing good at this at all. I'm hoping this lawyer will help um, so I can have somebody advocate for me. And uh, it's like I'm not even going towards resources like I should be. I'm just, I feel like I'm frozen. I just miss my kids and I don't want to have to have me and Brad have a relationship just to have a relationship with my kids. This isn't even about me being da a danger to the family, which I've never been. This is more about controlling me and having me commit or submit to and come home. I've been asked to come home so many times and every time I disagree, it, you know, court just goes uglier. I'm not willing to come home to have the same type of fights in front of our children. The last thing in the world I want to do is for them to hear one more fight and vile things said. And my son should be with me. I didn't even mean for him to be uh, left at the house. I had six days till court and I missed a court hearing in September. And then I went to the next one and things were already approved. I didn't even realize I missed a court date. And I've just been, I don't even know, lost ever since. I thought he was doing good. I'd call the school. I tried to go get him a couple times. They didn't send him to the office. I don't. Things aren't going according to, uh, this wasn't even a plan. I never planned on being out of my home. The system was used against me and I'm just out here uh, not moving forward. I, I don't. I need to keep, I haven't even kept my counseling appointments like I meant to. I haven't kept, I can have an assessment. They're not going to recommend treatment. I don't have, you know, I've had treatment experience. I don't know. Thank you for letting me talk. I would have been cut off a long time ago by now. Usually. I don't know how to move forward with this without... I don't, I don't know how to move forward with this. I've done CPS before, but I've never done court like this. And uh, I even missed court on purpose last week, last time. I didn't, I couldn't do it. And the time before that, I didn't, I couldn't even unmute it. So, Your Honor, I'd like to just add a couple things so that you have a broader picture. So um, Ms. Kroll and Mr. Peters were residing together. Um, they have another child together. Um, and that's when Ms. Kroll, you know, there was some issues between the two. There was some, there is some drug issues. And Ms. Kroll left the home about a year ago and Mr. Peters has um, had Bruno since. That's not um, true. Ms. Bruno was Ms. with me. Kroll, for, uh, Bruno was with me. And he wanted to go home. He was failing to thrive. He wasn't wanting to eat. He wasn't wanting to sleep. He wasn't wanting to take a shower or anything at anybody else's homes. I was having to find places to stay because I was kicked out of my home while I was at work. I was served. Bruno would stay with me at the hotel while I was working. Luckily, they would let me. Um, I only sent him home because I had six days till court and he really missed his sisters and he missed his dad. And when it didn't get approved, it was really hard to get him back out of the house. And last time I tried getting my son out of the house, Brad actually called the police, making a huge scene like I was kidnapping my son. He made a huge scene until I agreed to stay. And then he hung up the phone. It's oh, There's a lot more going on than just mom has a drug problem. Mom tried to fail. Mom tried to fake a UA. And it made it look really bad. 
I had weed and alcohol in my system and I'm pregnant. So did it do me any good? No. Did I get caught? Yes. Which is what happens every time I try doing anything like that. <clears throat> I haven't done anything to prove yes, otherwise. So. Yeah, Ms. Kroll, thank you. So thank you for that input. Go ahead, Ms. Farr. Yeah, so the court had <laughs> ordered um, a UA and the, and Ms. Kroll is being honest. She did try to fake it. And, the, and so that counts as a positive and there hasn't been any attempts for a UA since that I'm aware of. We did have, her and I did have one Zoom. We had scheduled follow-ups, but we haven't had any follow-ups. Um, and so, um, you know, I only have some initial information from her. What I do have, the information that I do have, it has been provided by Mr. Peters and Mr. Uh, and Ms. Cutberth. So um, I, you know, the, this is a guardianship matter. It's not a dependency case. There's no resources offered to parents in these cases. And so, um, if it's just not going to be what Ms. Kroll expects and and that it is unfortunate that there are no resources uh, to get parents help, but that's just the way these cases go. So we're, we're in a situation now where we have to get an emergency guardian appointed so that there is authority for uh, someone to make healthcare decisions and keep this child uh, safe from harm and provide for this child until we get further into this investigation. Bruno and had a meltdown and Brad sent him to the emergency room to be evaluated years. for suicide, like an adult. These are the type of decisions I don't may want to um, And they I... put him on medication cool. without telling me anything Hold about on, it. Mr. Peters. Yeah, I so I just, I want to make sure we have an, I apologize. Uh, I just want to make sure we have an orderly discussion. Um, Sorry because, about that. No, it's okay. I just want to make sure that uh, you know, when one person finishes that they, they, they feel like they've finished. And so I think Ms. Farr had a few things to, to finish. She was just finishing up. And yeah. So why don't you go ahead and finish up Ms. Farr? Yeah. And so that is true. Um, Ms. Uh, Bruno has gone to the emergency room and it was the appropriate thing to do. He was in a mental health crisis. The mental health crisis team was called and he received the treatment that he needed. It got him started to get some mental health care. So Mr. Peters is the one that um, initiated that. Brad was drinking and got him so, riled up. So Ms. Kroll, just so at type. this time, so at this time, we we just need to get the emergency guardian appointed, and that would be Mr. Peters. Mm -hmm. And then I'll and then this investigation will continue. I will be in touch with Ms. Kroll, and Ms. Kroll needs to get um, her UA completed. Um, and comply with the court's orders before visitation could be put in place. Uh, that UA place said that they would, um, if the courts were willing to cover the cost, they have to email them or um, keep get in touch with them. That that was an option too. Otherwise, I'd pay the sixty dollars, and it's eighty dollars to be watched, like the watch UA, or sixty dollars just to go yeah. in. Um, it's just really expensive for me. And that's what I would say, Ms. Crowland. Unfortunately, these cases don't have the ability to, to provide resources to parents. It's, it's, this is, these are tasks that the parents have to take on themselves to improve themselves to show that they can uh, parent. Okay. All right. Thank, thank, thank you both. I appreciate that input. Mr. Peters, you wanted to make a, a brief comment? Uh, I, um, I, I'm not going to sit and defend myself on any of these allegations. My 17 year old daughter um who i've had custody of for over 11 years um i got custody you. of her from oregon Six and brought years. her here and um she was having has been suffering from anxiety and depression from other things from a boyfriend from um her boyfriend breaking up with her after prom that sort of thing and she has received the right treatment for that as well as Brunswick did. Um, so moving on from that, um, there hasn't been, I don't know what she's saying about trying to contact Bruno because yesterday was the first time she's called him in a month. And that is not good for him. That's what's really not good for him. This in and out, in and out, never knows 
where mom's at. Nobody knows where she's at. Nobody knows what she's doing because she doesn't think she has to check in or be responsible. And we are responsible for our own lives and what we're doing. And these children don't have a choice. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Um, Ms. Cut Cutbirth, do you have any, any input? Um, yeah, I would just say that um, Bruno is being taken care of. He does have um, special needs and um, I wouldn't think that it's fair to say that he's miserable or depressed. He, I mean, he is Miss Shira said that, you know, he, she can't talk to him. She talked to him yesterday for 10 minutes on the phone. Um, I felt like 10 minutes was appropriate because um, she hadn't talked to him in over a month. I, it has not I, been a month. I, excuse me, I'm talking. <laughs> um, I, it has been over a month. She's missed every phone call for a long time. Um, also, I'm just saying that I felt like 10 minutes was appropriate. He did get privacy. He was um, able to go into his bedroom or um, he chose to go sit on the landing at the top of our stairs, which is totally fine, too. Um, and when she did speak with him or when she does speak with him, she's only getting snippets of how it's going because she's not talking, communicating with other people to find out how he's doing. She's just talking to him. So she gets, oh, I'm ups I'm upset. He's a, a an eleven year old boy who hasn't seen his mom in over a year. Or not over a year, but hasn't seen her in a long time. And um I just feel like that's not really giving her the whole picture. Um, yesterday when she spoke with him, he was at my house taking a break because he was having a hard time with his dad. And I thought that getting him over to my house where I have a trampoline and a pool and things for him to do, kids for him to play with would be a good time for him. Kind of get him out of that. He was, um, he had gotten in trouble and not a lot, not in trouble, but a consequence where he wasn't allowed to play a system and that upset him. And so he, um, chose to act out. Me and Brad have initiated a lot of different ways to oh, help Bruno Ms. Kepper, manage. I, I apologize. Uh, just, just so you're aware, um, Ms. Kroll, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're in court and I, if we were in court, you wouldn't be able to, to smoke a cigarette. So I'd ask that you no, I'm sorry. your I'm... cigarette. <clears throat> Thank you. And then Ms. Cutberth, um, just do you have any additional comments just related to the, the emergency, the appointment of the emergency guardian, anything related to that, any additional items? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I just think that um, Brad's a good candidate. He, Bruno was originally left with him anyways, <clears throat> and I stepped up to help Brad because Brad wasn't really um, entirely sure how to go about starting the process I helped him get the process started and we just decided that him staying with Brad is the best option and we're working together to kind of support Bruno in the best way that we know how um and I feel like so far we're doing a pretty good job considering the circumstances absolutely okay all right thank you all right I appreciate uh, hearing from from each of the parties related to to Bruno and his well-being you know and really that's kind of the focus here and I think Ms. Farr kind of talked up talked uh, or touched upon that issue is that um, we want to make sure that children are, are safe and well and protected and often it's not uncommon that parents struggle and the struggle is very challenging and difficult and um, it sounds like Ms. Kroll has experienced numerous factors that are really challenging including homelessness and then the pregnancy and then the, the fake UA and then the alcohol and the marijuana and not following through on, on some appointments. And so there's, there's a lot of factors, a lot of things that she's, she's working on and, and working through. And at the, so while she's working through that, we need to make sure that, that Bruno, which I love his name. It's a very great, it's a cool name, um, um, needs to be taken care of. And at this point, I think given the information that I've heard, is that there needs to be uh, some immediate protection uh, for him uh, while um, Ms. Kroll 
makes works and makes some improvements. And obviously, mm -hmm. as she makes those improvements, the need for that safety diminishes uh, because she's in a better place. She's in a better a spot to be able to provide that that care to to Bruno. So I'm going to grant that grant the the request for the appointment of the emergency guardian. Or can there be, and appoint him as a uh, Mr. Peters as a guardian. Can there be stipulations like he's not they're They're making major choices that I'm not involved in at all. Nobody's nobody would have even told me at your, all about your honor. It. And I'm being treated. I'm talking. So, so hold I'm on, talking. Mr. Peters. Yeah, yeah. We, we take turns. I'm being uh, treated sure, like sure. I don't deserve to know. And I know my son. This isn't just me. Listen, when he tells me he's not doing or whatever, or he tells me a situation where he's complaining about an adult, I question him and I break it down and I evaluate. I could tell when he's both. When he's just pulling it over, I could tell when he's serious and he's every single time I talk to him and it's not been a month court just happened. Uh, he's just completely flat. Like it's just. So you were talking I, about I, that you wanted to have some, some stipulations regarding yeah, like input, like, input regarding medical care, things of that nature. Yeah. If Jocelyn was to have a breakdown and say she wanted to hurt herself, she sure the heck wouldn't be sent to the emergency room like an adult and have a, mm -hmm. uh, Okay. I've seen the way Brad acts around him like that. And I don't, it makes it worse. It's like they're trying to make him seem crazier than he is. Brad is interested in the income he'll be receiving for social, social security for his dad and social security because of his mental health and how it would help the household income. That's not what this is about. And I have another option avenue I was thinking about as far as um, a caregiver for him, somebody that he knows. And I, if we could set the court date over, I or, um, I'm even contemplating just, uh, I, ne I really need to talk to this lawyer. Yeah. And I, feel like, and I think, uh, I think you're, you're on the right or, track and scroll is that, or you if know, he can just is, not, there's not any major decisions made, if we can hold it over. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm granting the order. I'm granting the relief. And then I think it's important to note. Uh, what you just said, Ms. Crow, and what Ms. Farr said is that the, the, the investigation continues. This is not a static case. People change, people make improvements. And as you make improvements and you get counsel um, and the case is, is moving forward, and it can certainly go in, in many different directions. And that's the hope is that the, the, the well-being of, of Bruno is safeguarded and preserved. That, that, that's the hope. And so it's not static. You'll, you'll have continued opportunity to have to have input. So having granted that uh, pro pro the, the, the request, um, I was just looking at the in the, the case file and maybe Ms. Farr, you could help me identify this as far as their, as far as the order appointing uh, guardian and the like was, was were any of those proposed orders filed? I see a proposed residential schedule uh, for guardianship, but I, I, is that the only order? I'm fairly new to this. Uh, yeah, no, Your Honor, we, there wasn't, uh, as far as I know, there was not an order presented to you. Um, Mr. Peters could probably get that down to the court and, and have it entered ex parte by tomorrow. Yeah, I think, um, I, I, think I do yeah, have it. It's a in the, presidential schedule so that Mr. Peters did file that. So I think that's the one that I'm looking at. Yeah, that's different yeah. than the emergency uh, order. Okay, really so I need an emergency it. order. Before I get started, and it's uh, I first want to make sure that I get out all the under code. I do something yeah. called DOC. Sorry. So I need an emergency <laughs> order appointing. So we, we, Go ahead, Ms. Farr. Appointing the emergency guardian. We could get that down to you um, by tomorrow to have entered. And in that, there are some options where I, I believe, I'm not looking at the order in front of me, but I believe there's some options where mother can have access to records. I don't think at this time, um, decision making should be appropriate given the fact that we don't have uh, current, you know, we haven't had a UA or anything to show that mother can uh, make appropriate decisions. And can he be he he be being UA for alcohol because it's not appropriate. He's drinking as much as he is around the kids. He doesn't handle it well, and he overreacts. Your Honor, with all due respect the to myself, of him drinking every I, single day. I don't, I, so, 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 I don't so, have an active warrant for me. my arrest right pardon now. That's nothing pardon to do me. with your alcohol. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Ms. Farr, do you have any concerns related to Mr. Peters and alcohol consumption and care of uh, Bruno? This is the first allegation I've heard about uh, alcohol consumption. So I will look into that as the okay. standard uh, case <clears> goes forward. 
Okay, so that's that sounds good. I'm I'm, I'm glad the issue was raised. Miss uh, Kroll's concerns can be addressed related to that. Um, so I will sign off on the order that's coming my way related to the appointment of the emergency uh, guardian, and then the residential schedule for the guardianship. Um, uh, I will sign off on that also, and that will get filed. Uh, so as far as a future court hearing, uh, Ms. Farr, do you have a proposed time frame? If um, for the standard investigation, I, I would say um, we probably could set a review out for a month. That should give me some time to do some investigating on the CPS allegations, the alcohol allegations, and then give mom time to get that UA done. Okay. All right. Um, I think that sounds appropriate. So we'll set the matter over to August 24th at 1030. And just confirming, um, Ms. Mr. Peters and Ms. Crowley, you're available on August 24th at 1030. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. That sounds good. So, going by, I haven't seen my kids physically in so long. Yeah. I mean, so if I'm going to hold off. In, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And the judge had ruled that we have two phone calls a week. He never said exact times or anything like And I get that routine and scheduling is important, mm -hmm. but talking, just talking, being able to talk to your mom is really important too. And I not always, I really am struggling with depression. It's really hard for me to want to even move some days. Like it's right. a lot on top of postpartum or depression. And it's, uh, I call an hour later or whatever it is, or it's the kids don't even want to be on the phone. He can't, he doesn't like the phone. It's awkward. They don't know what to do and seeing me on zoom makes it harder. It hurts. It hurts them. It's, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to call. I just feel like I'm breaking their heart every time. Okay. And I, I don't, it's weird. I spent every single day with them for 10 years. Never once, like one night overnight, not, and then to nothing. And having a restraining order from my home and my family for no reason. It was all, it's not what we're talking about right now. Okay. Um, is, yeah. yeah. So there's a Miss Crow's expressing a lot of concerns related to the contact and the like. And well, in a way, the way I'm looking at this is that the, we need to keep the the horse in front of the cart. And the horse, obviously, in this case, is uh, making sure that Miss Crow is engaging in services and taking the UA, uh, being evaluated for the SUD, and also for any mental health concerns, and then getting treatment and support because nobody gets through this life without that support. So that's kind of, that's where we're getting at at this point. So I'm going to hold off on uh, making any uh, provisions, specific provisions for, for phone calls. Obviously, if the parties want to agree to something, then they can, but I'm going to hold off on, on, on ordering that. So we'll see everybody on the, on the 24th. Um, one more thing. We're complete. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll see everybody on the 24th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. All right, next let's move to the guardianship of Macy Amron and Max Amron, cost 23424508. Um, I'll just ask if uh, parties are present on that. If you could just identify yourselves, please. Again, this is Macy and Max Amron. I show, I'm looking for. Uh, Christopher Amron, Jennifer Amron, uh, Ryan Amron, Lisa Amron, either of you or any of you present today? Not hearing any responses. If you're speaking, please unmute and, and speak your name because I'm not able to hear you. Um, so it uh, looks like there were, so I, I guess what we'll do, and Madam Clerk, if you have input on this, I'm certainly open, is that there was, it looked like there was a, a order denying the petition uh, but indicated that it was to be set to today's docket. Um, and so at this point, the, that order appointing emergency minor guardian was denied, but we set it for hearing. So I think I'm just in a position if people aren't here just to strike it. Okay, so I'll strike, I'll strike that hearing. Uh, next, I have Caden Homer, which is cause 23424708. Um, there we have present, uh, looks like uh, Ms. Powers has patiently been waiting. Um, she represents the state and has the, it looks like a child support interest. And I'll ask if um, 
Let's see. Kaden, let's see, we've got Justin. Justin Homer, Justin, are you there? Yeah, Justin and Jennifer. Justin and Jennifer. Okay, great. All right. Welcome. And then I see uh, Jennifer Powers, correct? Is that you, Ms. Powers? Yes. Okay. All right. Welcome. All right. And so we're, we're here today. It uh, looks like... Um, let me just first, maybe we could start with Ms. Powers. Uh, you could state your your position and, and why you're here and what, you, what you're seeking. So if you could uh, just lead off, please. Thanks, Your Honor. Um, we're here today because this child is receiving TANF benefits. My understanding in reviewing the file is it looks like all the parties are in agreement with guardianship. The child started receiving TANF on June 30th, at which point the state had an interest um, in the child support for that child, as it's the parent's duty, not the state's duty to support the child. Um, given the TANF status, we entered our notice of appearance and response and we proposed child support. I, we did not mail out our proposed child support until July 11th, so I, I don't know if the parties want additional time to review it. Um, I am prepared to go forward today, but I wanted to be transparent about the timing of those pleadings. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. Powers. So th what Ms. Powers was discussing, it looks like it's a 25-page document or a, a grouping of documents uh, that's entitled Proposed Orders Relates Relating to a Child Support Order, which is a, looks like a eight or nine page document, and then also a child support order. And then it looks like there's also worksheets, which are a series of a table or a graph. So um, Mr. Homer and Ms. Homer, did you receive copies of those documents? Yes, we did. You did. Okay, great. And uh, Ms. Powers, did you receive copies of those documents? Yes, I was able to review them last night. I was out of town for five days, so I did review them last night. Okay, great. All right, thank you all for confirming that. So, Ms. Powers, with with that having been reviewed, then you're 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 seeking seeking the relief requested in those documents of the child support payment. I think it was four eighty six a month. We're, we're seeking four eighty six from the father and two eighty one from the mother. Um, this is kind of an odd situation because the statutes require both parties to support the child. In this particular situation, both parents reside together. Generally, when we're having a minor guardianship situation, the parents reside separately. And so the transfer payment is impacting two separate households instead of two separate transfer payments impacting one household. Hmm. Um, so I also wanted to point that out. Um, to the court. But what we did is we imputed the father at net median. Uh, he has a history of being self-employed, so we did not have really any good um, gauge to guess what his income is. So we used the net, net median. For the mother, according to employment security data, she's worked um, minimal hours for the father's company. Um, and I just averaged her hourly wage over the last three years of employment security data. It showed an average of 1935 an hour. We imputed her at 35 hours per week. Our office policy is to um, count full time as 35 hours um, instead of 40 hours. That resulted in a net income from the mother of 2,941, from the father of 5,102. Uh, the parents have two other minor children in their household, so I also applied a whole family deviation that would result in a transfer payment from the father of 486 and from the mother of 281. That's a total of 767 a month coming out of their household. Since TANF began June 30th, we're asking the child support begin July 1st. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Powers, we appreciate that. All right, Mr. Homer, what's, what's your vantage point? Um, yesterday, I submitted a declaration to the court and sealed financial documents. Let's see if I have that. Um, the most recent pleading received was filed on July twelfth. So I haven't. I don't. I don't know. I haven't reviewed that. And if um, did did you serve a copy on Ms. Powers? Um, the clerk there said that everybody was being served. So the only I I didn't know if I was supposed to go serve them myself or if the if somebody was appointed to do that. Yeah. Our office has not received a copy. Yeah, generally, Mr. Homer, the, uh, the the onus or the responsibility for serving papers on, on on another party lies upon the person who's filing the paper. So, if you're filing a document, 
that you want the court to review, then you need to provide a copy to other interested uh, parties. So it sounds like that has important information, at least for me to make a decision and for Ms. Powers, maybe she might reconsider her position based on the information you've provided. She might not. Um, so it would be good to be able to everyone to review that, including myself. So that, uh, since I don't have it yet and Ms. Powers doesn't have it yet, probably it would be wise to set it over a period of time to allow everyone to review it, to come back and, and meet and share everybody's vantage point. Okay. So, so uh, in, do you have any concerns if we look at maybe either a one or two week time frame setting it over to allow everybody to di digest and share information? Oh, that's fine. Okay. I would ask that we go two weeks um, because if, if I reconsider my position, I'd like to get out amended proposed worksheets. Um, is August 3rd, that's a Thursday at 1030. How does that look for you, the, the, the Homer schedule? Uh, that should be fine. Okay. And Ms. Powers, it sounds like that'd work okay for you? Yes. Okay. And uh, and Ms. Jennifer Powers, sorry. <laughs> I just realized that. Sorry. Yes, that works fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks for being patient. Um, so August 3rd, we will have the opportunity to review Mr. Homer's financial family declaration and all the other parties will also. So Mr. Homer, if you can make sure that you serve a copy on Ms. Power. So I, I know a lot of parties sometimes are, are, are amenable to service via email. So the two of you could talk and um, and work out an arrangement. So um, you can just put it into a PDF file and, and serve it that way. Yeah. That's I mean, fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And right. I have just typed my email address into the chat. So do I need to put my email in there as well? That would that would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if I can. And and I'll leave the Zoom up for a little bit because I don't want to feel like make people feel like they're rushed and like, oh shoot, I didn't get that email written down. Okay, uh, um, Mr. Homer, did you get the, those two email addresses jotted down? Um, we got the first one, we're writing the second one now. Perfect, okay, great. Okay, we're good. Okay, great. All right, we appreciate you sending that out to the other parties and then we will come back on August 3rd at 10.30 uh, to look at the, the issue of child support. Okay. All right. Any questions before we break? Nope. Uh, so are we only doing the child support order right now, or are we doing the uh, order for minor guardianship? So let's see. I, I think probably both will be reviewed. Let me just double check. So looking at the case, there's a, a petition to a point, and then the, also it looks like there's consent that's been filed by um jennifer peterson and justin homer and so it looks like as far as that goes it looks like there's no objection if i understand correctly mr homer your your position is that there's you're consenting to the appointment of a guardian yes okay With, so uh, yes go ahead so when we filled out the petition or signed the that would we that we had written uh, read the petition uh -huh. it shows on page 10 item 23. item 23 the children have right to child support including medical support from the legal parents according to state law hmm. i asked the court to order the parents to no request, no request is what was checked mm -hmm. so we're wondering why this is all of a sudden done a 180. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, my understanding, Ms. Ms. Amy Powers could provide additional input, is that starting on June 30th, the child started receiving uh, some type of state benefits. And because the state has an interest in benefits outflowing, uh, her client is asking her to seek some support uh, for the child. Ms. Powers, is that close? That is close. Um, Jennifer Powers is not the one seeking child support. When the child went on TANF, the custodian of the child 
assigns their right to receive child support to the state of Washington. The law requires the state of Washington to seek reimbursement from the parents with the goal that the parents provide the financial support um, instead of the state. So when the child went on TANF, it triggered the state of Washington's obligation to seek support from the parents. So we received adoption support for Caden um, through the state. Through the state. So I'm wondering why, you know what I mean? It's, we're going the wrong way with this. Hmm. This has been an absolute nightmare. Yeah, um, those are good questions and sympathetic um, reaction to the difficulties that uh, litigation causes. Um, so I don't have a good answer for you as, as far as adoption support and then the state uh, seeking child support uh, for the for the child. Um, I think Ms. Powers provided a nice a nice summary, at least from her vantage point, of why the the state's seeking seeking the support. Uh, but the combination between that and the uh, adoption support, I, I'm not I'm not up to speed on that, so I can't answer that. So on the future court date, will we be able to discuss more in depth? I guess because everything the state went the numbers the state was was going off of was basically 2019 when our business was you know booming. Uh, Jen was working and Jen has since had to quit her job to work for the nursery for free um, just to keep us afloat. So I mean, yeah, I, definitely. I talk about something that's going to be in the future, but um, is there anything else we need to bring to that future court date? Yeah. Yeah. We will definitely be able to discuss it more at that time. And especially relevant is are the documents that you filed, I think yesterday, the, the family financial status and the like, that's going to provide a lot of uh, new information. It sounds like, because you said, it sounds like it's new as opposed to 2019 figures. And that will uh, allow us to make a determination of what's a, an appropriate amount. It may be a lot less than what the, the state is seeking based on your current financial situation. Okay. So, yeah. one, of the, one of the things I uh, submitted was, you know, the last three years of the PL, um, one of the problems is we file an extension for our taxes. So I don't have 2020 or 2022 um, complete yet. I mean, I have the, the income side of it, which is dramatically lower than the two years prior, but I don't have the full expenses worked out because right. we don't actually do our taxes until the end of September just because we, you know, we're an online nursery and we still have orders pending and whatnot. So we have to file an extension each year. So it's basically just going off of my PL. Um, like I said, that's already been submitted. I don't know why um, you don't have it in front of you yet, but <laughs> it was done yesterday. Yeah, it, it takes a while for the processing. Yeah, when the clerks get it, there's multiple steps that has to take place. And so unfortunately things just aren't uploaded yet at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> So yeah, we'll definitely talk about those, all those issues and the related to the incomes and diminished incomes and the like, and we'll hopefully make a, a fair decision on that uh, when we see each other on the, the 3rd, 3rd of August. Okay, sounds good. Okay, great. All right, well, thanks everybody. Appreciate the input. Uh, hang in there. We'll see everybody on August 3rd. Thank, thank you. you. Great, thank you. All right, I believe that concludes the last matter on today's gu minor guardianship docket. And so at this point, I will end the Zoom.